Hey y'all, welcome to Science and Engineering in KSP. I'm your host, Andy Leonard, and this week we're going to talk more about maneuvers. We'll kick off by making an addendum to last week's demonstration of general transfer maneuvers, then we'll dip our toes into the subject of rendezvous by learning about phasing. Finally, we'll cover how to change the inclination and therefore the plane of your orbits. Now, let's dig in. So since last week's episode was so rushed, uh, I didn't talk about general transfers in as much detail as I would have liked to. Recall that we performed a deorbit burn to lower our periapse without having to point directly in the rec retrograde direction. So we raised our uh, apoapse out to uh, something like 600 kilometers and our periapse came down to 30 kilometers well within the atmosphere uh, uh, to drag us down into deorbit. What I don't think that I explicitly showed, though, is that the deorbit trajectory is itself a transfer orbit, and we can use it to get into another orbit. So let's say we want to go from our 100 kilometer circular orbit here to a 500 kilometer circular orbit using the general transfer method and the same transfer orbit parameters as last time. Remember that in order to get into the transfer orbit, we point at 69.7 degrees above the horizon and burn into uh, burn to get a delta v of about 560 meters per second. So we're going to switch over to uh, being in this orbit real quick. So now we're on our transfer trajectory with the apoapse out here at 600 kilometers, periapse at about 30 kilometers. Um, and now that we're on this trajectory, we can repeat the process that we did last episode to get into our new circular orbit. Now our current semi-major axis is 915 kilometers. Our goal semi-major axis is 1100 kilometers. The specific energy associated with our transfer orbit is about negative 1,930,000 joules per kilogram, and its specific angular momentum is 1,708,000,000 meters squared per second. With all this information, we apply the vis viva equation again to find that our velocity at 500 kilometers, which would be probably around here or so, um, is going to be 1600 meters per second and the goal circular speed is going to be uh, 1792 meters per second and using the the trig techniques we talked about last week our flight path angle is going to change by 14 degrees and then busting out the law of cosines again we find that our delta v is going to have to be 455 meters per second so we have 843 meters per second right now so we're just going to burn until this says uh, 388. Now to find the angle we need to burn at, remember we find the radial and tangential components of velocity at 500 kilometers for both orbits. Now since our goal orbit is circular, the radial velocity is zero and the tangential velocity is just the velocity. For our transfer orbit, we find the tangential velocity by dividing the transfer orbit angular momentum by the radius, which yields a tangential velocity of 1553 meters per second. Then we square that, subtract it from the square root of the total velocity, and take the square root uh, to find that our radial velocity is going to be 387 meters per second. Then plugging everything in, we find we'll have to burn at an angle of negative 58.33 degrees. So basically 58 degrees down from the horizontal here. All right, um, now that we have everything set up and we know what we need to, to do, let's skip out to 500 kilometers and see how the math works out. All right, let's go. We're burning a little later than I'd like, but uh, let's just see if this kind of works out here. And there you have it. We are in an almost perfectly circular orbit. Apoapse 520 kilometers, periapse 505 kilometers. Now those uh, the kind of spare numbers there floating around are just because that uh, I didn't burn at exactly 500 kilometers. I burned a little bit later and we didn't have the exact nice round numbers for our orbital parameters that we did the math based on. But uh, we got a pretty good approximation here. And there you have it. That's how we do general transfers. Let's move on and talk about a special case of the Hohmann transfer that will come in handy when we start talking about rendezvous. We're going to talk about phasing. Now to talk about phasing, we need to introduce a new orbital parameter, the mean motion. The mean motion is just the angular speed of a satellite averaged over the period of one orbit. 
What we do is we take the gravitational parameter, divide it by the cube of the semi-major axis, and take the square root to get our average angular speed in radians per second. So let's check real quick and make sure it makes sense. Using the equation for period of a circular orbit, 2 pi square root of r cubed over mu, we find that for a 100 kilometer altitude uh, satellite in a circular orbit, the period is going to be 1958.12 seconds. Now, for this same altitude, the mean motion is 0 0.0032088. And if we divide the number of radians in one orbit, 2 pi, by the mean motion, we get a period of 1958.11, basically the same thing. So, now that we know what we need to about mean motion, let's talk about phasing. Let's say that we have two spacecraft in a 500 kilometer circular orbit on opposite sides of the planet, and we want to get them closer to each other. Now to accomplish this, we'll first need to pick some integer number of target spacecraft orbits, uh, which is the number of complete orbits that the target will travel before we catch up, and we'll call this uh, k sub target. Um, for now, let's pick 4. Uh, then the period of our phasing orbit is going to be 2 pi times 4 plus pi, since we're 180 degrees uh, apart and all divided by the mean motion we get a period of 17,357 seconds. Now, we need to pick a number of orbits that we want to make over this period, so let's pick five, and we'll call it K sub chaser. Uh, what this means is that the orbit we want to get into takes us around the planet five times for every four times the target goes around the planet. The semi-major axis of our orbit is the cube root of mu times period over two pi times five squared. Uh, which for us is about 1,025 kilometers. Finally, we get the velocity at this radius for this orbit, which is 1,725 meters per second, which means we'll need to apply a delta V of 83 meters per second to lower our apoapse to our phasing orbit. We're lowering, we're lowering our apoapse since we know we're making more orbits and so are going to need to go faster and eventually we'll catch up with the target. And when this happens, we'll apply the same magnitude of delta V, but in the opposite direction, in the prograde direction. So closing the orbit and completing the maneuver. Let's try it out. Now, since our current velocity is 1793, we, and we uh, need to apply a delta V of 64.63, we'll burn until this says about 1728 meters per second. And we're gonna go ahead and point retrograde and get lined up there and we'll go ahead and burn. Alright, we overshot it a little, but we should, uh, it should, shouldn't be too, too important to our final result. So let's speed up time and count our orbits. One, two, three, Four, almost there. And I'm going to slow down time again as we get closer to periaps. And yeah, they are uh, our our target is pretty close to us. So what we're going to do now is raise our uh, periaps, and uh, we will be pretty much rendezvoused. And I think if we set them as the target, we see that we have a we're only separated by 100 kilometers, which in the, uh, in the scheme of space is pretty, pretty close. Now, this, uh, the math that I've been doing is just basically a special case of the math for circular orbits. If you want to do it for more elliptical orbits, then it gets a little bit more complicated. And there's more to rendezvous than this that we will cover later, but hopefully this was a pretty interesting and helpful introduction. Uh, let's finally move on to out-of-plane maneuvers. Now, we won't be getting into uh, inclination changes too much until we go interplanetary. Um, in Kerbal Space Program, the moon is in the same plane as, uh, as Kerbin, as a, an equ equatorial orbit around Kerbin. Um, and I don't think we'll be going to Minmus. So we won't worry too much about inclination changes except for uh, minor adjustments and stuff like that. But when we get there, it'll be helpful to the, know the math a little bit. Let's start with a situation where we want to change our inclination only, so no semi-major axis change. Then the formula we use to figure out the delta V we need is delta V equals 2V sine 
delta i over 2. So if you want to change your inclination by 10 degrees, you would plug in 5 to the equation and so on and so forth. And what we find when we, when we run the numbers for our 100 kilometer circular orbit is, is pretty staggering. For a 10 degree change in inclination, we need to apply 391 meters per second. For a 20 degree change, it's 780 meters per second. And for a 30 degree change, it's 1,163 meters per second. So inclination changes are very, very expensive, right? Um, but that's just for the special case of where you want to have purely, uh, you just want to change your inclination purely and, and nothing else really about the orbit. And if you absolutely have to execute an inclination change, it's always better to try and combine it with, uh, with any other maneuvers you might need to do, like raising your Apple apps or, or anything like that. And for, to, to figure out the delta V we need for that, um, we, we, we can modify the law of cosines rule. And so what we do is we uh, take our final radial velocity and subtract our initial radial velocity. We square that, and then we add both of the tangential velocities squared, and then we subtract two times the each of the tangential velocities times the cosine of the inclination change. And figuring out where, uh, where we have to point for all of that can get a little bit hairy, so we won't go too deep into it. Um, we should just keep that equation in the back of our minds for, for when we go inter, uh, interplanetary and we will inevitably need to make uh, not insignificant adjustments to our inclination. Well, um, I think that about wraps it up for this week. Thank you for watching. I hope you had fun watching it. I had fun making it. Um, I think next week we are finally going to slip the surly bonds of Kerbin's gravitational pull and uh, we're going to talk about the patched conic approximation which um, tells us what happens when we change our orbit from the sphere of influence of one celestial body to another. Um, Alright, I'm looking forward to it. I will see you next week. Thank you for watching.